Hello everyone, welcome back to Louis Garage. Today we are going to be talking about ECUs again. Yes, all about ECUs. In this episode, we're going to be showing you how to repair these ECUs without doing any soldering. We're going to be using a conductive epoxy and it's going to be really straightforward, really simple for anyone to do this. And there's very little risk of damage to your ECU. Uh, you might have seen my previous episode where we soldered the capacitor onto the PCB of the ECU. Uh, that is no longer the method that we use due to risks with uh, a lot of the really really small tiny gold wires around the ECU so please try and do this method instead do not use the soldering method and I'm going to be showing you exactly what to do so just in case you're wondering this is still the original ECU for my car uh, after the repair from the last video link in the description below and it's been working absolutely fine absolutely perfect no problems at all but I think we did get a little bit lucky because we didn't damage any of the gold wires when we did this repair but it's really, really, really easy to damage the gold wires, as we found out later on. Um, so I think that the new technique is probably a lot better. It's a lot less risk. It's a little bit easier for you to do. You don't really need any special tools. So that's going to be the thing that I recommend in the future. Okay, everyone. So we're back inside now uh, in my study. Uh, what do we need to do to actually do this repair? Well, the most important thing is your conductive epoxy. So this one here that I've bought online is from MG Chemicals. It comes uh, in two parts and you need to mix them in equal proportions. So I've got just a little bit of cardboard and you can get a bit of plastic as well. Um, and I'm just going to use a toothpick to mix it up and to apply. You are probably going to also need a knife um, just to cut open the ECU. This one's actually already been opened before. Uh, but if you're opening up your ECU for the first time, you are going to need a knife of some sort. Uh, I would also recommend having some tweezers as well, just so that it makes it a little bit easier to hold the little capacitor uh, and position it in the right place. Uh, they also help you to scratch the PCB, uh, you know, the metal on the PCB, so that you get good contact with your epoxy. And lastly, you're going to need some sort of sealant. Um, so here I've got some RTV sealant, uh, but you know, you can use pretty much any sort of silicon sealant as long as it seals and as long as it holds the plastic cover in place. Awesome. All right. So looking at the ECU, like I said, this one's already been opened. So I've just taken it um, off with a knife uh, and it is a bit of a mess in here, unfortunately. This is probably one of the worst ones that I've seen. Um, and this is why we've stopped soldering the capacitors onto the PCB. And now we are actually just using the conductive epoxy. Uh, as you can see, someone's actually already tried soldering this on. But for some reason, it obviously didn't work. Um, I think they've attempted to do something else with the sealant here. Or maybe that was earlier. And they tried to hold the capacitor in place just using um, some RTV or some sealant. Now, I'm not going to try and remove all of this because uh, there is a real risk that you could damage the gold wires, as you can see. Or maybe you can't really see, but yeah, there's some really, really delicate gold wires right around, you know, sort of this area. Um, this is very, very microscopic. You can see my finger and my fingernail and the size of those gold wires. It is very, very tiny. Basically, the width of a human here. Uh, it looks like the wires are actually okay for this. So I'm going to go ahead and try and do this repair. I won't know whether or not this is going to work until the owner of the ECU plugs it into his 147 GTA. Uh, this is actually from a Sally speed. So um, yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be a bit of a question mark until we plug it in and try it out. But I think the gold wires are actually looking okay. And yeah, like I said, this is, this is part of the reason why we don't use soldering anymore. Because as soon as you heat up the silicon uh, coating on the PCB, it tends to uh, melt and it tends to run. Uh, and as soon as it starts melting, it actually takes the gold wires with it. Uh, so therefore you get broken gold wires and that's how you break your ECU permanently. So yeah, once again, that's why we use the conductive epoxy. And I don't recommend doing the soldering technique anymore because um, we have ruined uh, one ECU and that was very sad. So definitely do not do that. So going back to this one, we've got the capacitor here. I'm just going to put the old one back in, even though I've got some new ones, uh, because most of the time the capacitor is not the problem anyway. Uh, but 
uh, you might be able to see that there are some um, soldering remnants. You can see just there, there's a bit of solder there. So I'm going to have to scratch those off and get rid of that. Uh, and then just make sure that we have some good contact with, uh, with the PCB. So it's going to be pretty delicate, but we'll give it a go. Okay, so one thing that you can do once you open it up and have a look is have a look at the tracks on the PCB. So this is the area that we're looking at here. That's where the capacitor used to be. Um, and you, what you want to do is just check that these tracks are clean and they're open. And you can actually scratch the PCB just a little bit, just with your tweezers or just with your knife. Don't, don't scratch them too much, but just a little bit, just to make sure that you clear any corrosion and to make sure you have a good um, surface for the conductive epoxy to glue onto. So there you go. Just do a little bit of a scratch. Okay, the other thing that you can do while you've got all, everything open is you can actually check the continuity. So here I've um, put my multimeter into view. I've got it on the continuity setting. And as you can see, if I touch the probes together, it should go to zero. And so similarly, if I touch on the PCB, the areas where uh, the capacitor is going to go, and another piece of the PCB or another part of the PCB that it connects to, you should get a continuity reading for that as well. Um, so this one's a little bit tough because someone's uh, tried to solder this before, so there's actually a lot of flux here. Um, but yeah, you should get a pretty decent continuity reading. And similarly on this other side as well, um, if I press down just a little bit, yeah, there we go, you get a continuity reading. Uh, and this is going to help us uh, because um, once we put on the new capacitor, we can actually check the continuity and make sure that it, um, it's actually touching the PCB and it's, it's conducting with the PCB. So that's really important. Uh, make sure you don't touch any of the gold wires when you're doing this or at any stage of this process. Um, so, yeah, uh, now we've prepped the surface and we've tested the surface. I'm pretty confident that everything is going to work. Uh, so now we are going to prepare the conductive epoxy. Uh, and then from there, we can uh, put the conductive epoxy on both components um, and we should be able to put it all back together. All right, so we've got both tubes of the conductive epoxy, and we are going to be squeezing these out onto this piece of cardboard. Uh, you don't need a lot, um, just make sure that you squeeze them out in roughly the right quantities. It is meant to be a one-to-one -one ratio. Let me just double check that. Equal amounts of epoxy, yep, uh, read the instructions. Oops, I'm um, having to do this on the side here, but yeah, equal amounts of epoxy. So we're going to be doing the B. I've chosen the B tube first for some reason. I don't know why. Um, and we're going to squeeze just a little bit. It's actually pretty thick. There we go. That should be more than enough. You just want to make sure that you've got enough so that you can mix it all up together. But you don't really need a lot, to be honest. Because we're really just doing a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit. Um, sweet, and then this is the A tube. It comes out looking rather like thermal paste. I, I guess it's very similar to thermal paste, actually. There we go. Oops, I think I might have squeezed a little bit more A than B, but never mind. I think it's roughly the same. Cool. So there you go. That's my little mix there, and then I'm just gonna mix both of those together. Okay. I think that's pretty good. Cool. All right. So what I'm going to do first is actually put some on the PCB. So we're going to take a little dab on the toothpick. And again, you don't really need a lot, just a tiny, tiny dab on the toothpick. And then we're going to just place some of that to the PCB, just coat it really. You don't really need a lot, just a little bit. And what you want to do is actually try and cover 
quite a bit of that surface, but you don't need a lot of epoxy. Just a little bit of epoxy to cover the surface. Yep, that should be fine. And then similarly on the other side as well. And what that does is that it means, um, hopefully, when we put on the capacitor, it's going to touch more of the surface, which is what you want, because some of it may not conduct. So the, the kind of the more surface you have touching the capacitor, the better. And, you know, you, you do have quite a bit of time to work this material. I think it's around 10 to 15 minutes. Cool. And what we're actually going to do with this one as well is that we're going to use a brand new capacitor because um, I'm not sure what's happened to the last one. It looks like it's in pretty bad shape. So I've got a brand new capacitor here. You can buy these from RS Components online or, you know, from your favorite electronics shop. And I can post a link to that in the video. Um, this other capacitor here this one sometimes also gets loose as well, so just bear that in mind that um, you may actually have to do the same on the other one as well. You do potentially want to check it. Alright, so here we go. Here's the new capacitor. Brand new. It's never been opened before, and you can tell it's the same one because it says 35k. Sweet. So with this capacitor, what I'll do is I'll hold it with some tweezers. This is why we have tweezers. So I'll hold it with some tweezers. And then we'll do the same thing. We'll just lightly coat the contacts with this conductive epoxy. Mix it up really, really well. Dab on some of this epoxy. Again, you don't really need a lot. I mean, I've, I've probably mixed enough to do about 10 of these capacitors, really. Yep, so you just want to coat it very lightly. Bit of a messy job, but you know. Sweet, yeah, so you just want to coat it just down the bottom. You don't have to do any on the sides. And uh, we'll try and reattach that back onto our PCB. All right, so get your capacitor in position like this. Cool, and then we'll just drop it down onto the PCB and push down on it. It's going to slide around a little bit, but that's fine. There's plenty of space between the two contacts. Sweet. Just check on the side there. Make sure it's nice and snug. It's making contact. This side as well. Make sure it's making contact. And I think we're good. Yep, looks good. Looks like um, the epoxy has made contact with the capacitor. Again, apologies about this particular example. It's, you know, obviously been, obviously been badly repaired before, but I think this is still going to work. And this is a good thing about conductive, conductive epoxy, because even if you make a little mistake or whatever, it's not the end of the world. Um, you know, you can just pull the capacitor back out and um, you can scratch off the epoxy and you can start all over again if you wanted to but that looks like it's going to work so we'll just put the cover back on for now just temporarily we're not going to seal it up um, and then we're going to wait about 24 hours and after 24 hours we can do the same continuity check again uh, and just make sure that everything's okay so see you in about 24 hours all right, everyone, so it's the next day, and I think I've waited long enough um, for the conductive epoxy to cure. 
Uh, it does say in the instructions that you should heat up the components to 150 degrees for it to cure properly, but I, I don't think you actually need to do that. I haven't needed to do that in my experience, um, and I also don't want to put this ECU uh, through lots of heat. So I think 150 degrees seems a little bit too high, um, and so far I've had success just leaving it at room temperature and letting it cure over around about 24 hours. So I'm just going to touch the capacitor and give it a little bit of a wiggle, give it a little bit of a test, and everything seems to be really stable and sticking in there. So I think that's all good. And then I've also got my multimeter again. And what I'm going to do is, again, I've set it to the continuity test. Um, as you can see, if I touch two probes together, it goes down to zero or thereabouts. Uh, so what you can do is for each of the contacts on the capacitor, you can check to see if it is making contact with the board. So over here, we've got one contact um, on this side. And then if I touch it on that side on the PCB, yep, it is definitely making contact. So that's all good. And then on this side as well, um, I'm just going to do the same thing. And it is making contact. Awesome, so hopefully that was really useful for you guys. Uh, I know that a lot of people have been having these ECU issues and you know my original video was done you know over three years ago so it's quite a long time ago and we've learned a lot more about these ECUs since then. Okay, awesome, that's it for today. Thank you for joining an episode here at Louis Garage uh, and I will see you very shortly with some more content on the Alpha uh, 147 GTA and also on the Lotus Exige. Catch you later. Bye-bye.